Good morning. Our first two locations remind us of World War I. Our first reminder is out here in the middle of the forest, a couple of miles west of Lyndhurst. We've come to see one of the more unexpected sights in the forest, and it's just beyond this oak tree. We're walking towards the Portuguese fireplace. So what's it doing here? During the First World War, there was a huge demand for timber and the Canadian government sent over about 1,500 lumberjacks who set up the first camp in this area. As the war progressed, more men were needed in France and some of the Canadians went off to fight. In 1917, an army unit from Portugal took their places at the sawmill, with a camp being built especially for them. After the war, the camp was demolished, but this fireplace was left standing as a memorial to the Portuguese and Canadian men who helped the war effort here in the New Forest. If you'd like to visit the fireplace yourself, the nearest car park is Milliford Bridge and the What Three Words location is saints.choice.looms. Our second reminder of the First World War can be seen at St Nicholas Church in Brockenhurst. In the churchyard, we'll find a Commonwealth War Grave Cemetery. In 1915, Brockenhurst was chosen by the War Office to become a hospital centre to treat soldiers injured in the fighting in France. This was due to its proximity to the port of Southampton, its railway connections and an abundance of large houses in the area. Initially, the hospital was established south of the village for the Indian troops of the Hoare and Meerut divisions. Two local hotels, the Balma Lawn and the Forest Park Hotel, were also commandeered as part of the hospital. The road between these hotels is still called Meerut Road, in memory of the Indian soldiers who were treated here. This hospital was then replaced by Number 1 New Zealand General Hospital in June 1916 after the Indian divisions were replaced by Anzac troops. The New Zealand hospital remained at Brockenhurst until it was closed early in 1919. Over 21,000 casualties were treated in Brockenhurst but sadly more than 100 New Zealand, Indian and other soldiers died in the village's hospitals. The War Grave Cemetery contains 93 New Zealand graves, one Australian grave, plus those of three Indian and three unidentified Belgian civilians. Other Indian soldiers who died were cremated on one of two local pious sites in keeping with Hindu religious doctrine and no records of these deaths have been found so far. Inside St Nicholas Church we can see a display which commemorates the activities at the hospitals here in Brockenhurst during World War I. If you visit the church, don't miss the great yew tree to the side of the main entrance. The yew was carbon dated in the mid-1980s and was found to be over a thousand years old. Also in the churchyard, near the war graves, we can see the grave of Brusher Mills. He was a famous local snake catcher in the 1800s, who became famous after an article about him was published in the national press. He was a keen cricket fan. He regularly attended cricket matches at nearby Balmolorn Hotel and was paid to sweep the pitch between innings, which is how he got his nickname, Russia. Our other three locations are reminders of World War II. We'll move to the northwest of the New Forest to find our third location near Ibsley. Along the south coast of England during World War II, there was an elaborate communications network set up to monitor aircraft movements, both enemy and defenders. This relied on a series of direction finding posts 
and it's the remnants of one of these that we can see at Ibsley. These direction finding posts use high frequency radio bands, so they came to be known as HFDF or Huff Duffs. The Huff Duff would have been a three story wooden tower about 30 feet high. What we can see in front of us is a blast wall built to protect the Huff Duff Tower from enemy bombs exploding nearby. As we walk inside the blast wall, we can see the outline of the foundations of the wooden tower. Nearby, we can see the foundations of the crew's living quarters and the air raid shelter. If you visit this site, be wary of exploring the inside of the uh, air raid shelter, as it's apparently home to some adders. We're staying in the northern part of the New Forest for our fourth location. During World War II, the whole of the Ashley Walk Valley was fenced off and used as a bombing range. It was used to test new weapons and to train bomber crews. Targets of various sorts were set up and a number of observation shelters were built around the valley to allow senior military and civilian personnel to watch the trials in relative safety. Our fourth location is one of these observation shelters, which we can see in front of us. This is the only surviving observation shelter in the valley still standing. We can see the slits through which the observers watch the action. This clip from the Imperial War Museum shows a trial of one of the bouncing bombs. Sir Barnes Wallace, the inventor, watched this trial from one of these observation shelters. By the way, the bomb hits the target, not the observation shelter, although they do look rather similar. Inside the observation shelter, we can see a lot of information about the bombing range and what happened here during World War II. If we go back outside and walk around the end of the shelter, we can see an interesting symbol in the brickwork. Can you see it? V for victory the wartime symbol made popular in Britain by Winston Churchill. We're staying in the Ashley Walk Valley for our fifth and final location. I said earlier that a number of targets were set up here and which were used as part of the bomber crew's training. Most of these targets have disappeared, although some evidence can still be seen and we'll return to that in the next video in this series. Today though, we're going to see a huge concrete arrow. As you walk along the main track across Ashley Walk, the arrow is very easy to miss if you don't know the precise location. We missed it twice before we found it. The what three words location is defends.senses.satin. I've listed the what three words locations for all of the sites that we visited in the text below. The concrete arrow here was used to point the bomber crews towards their target at the bottom of the valley. The arrow and the target were both illuminated at night to enable nighttime bomber training. The target is no longer to be seen down in the valley, but the arrow is certainly still here. It's very impressive. If you didn't know why the arrow was here and you stumbled across it, you probably never guessed that it helped the Allies to win the Second World War. So there's five locations where you can still see evidence of the part that the New Forest played in the two world wars. The next video in this series will visit five more locations. If you've enjoyed the video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and feel free to share the video on Facebook, Nextdoor and any other social media that you use. Thanks very much for watching.